Okada now a free agent. New Japan contract expired at midnight, Japan Standard Time. He released a statement on X thanking fans for supporting New Japan. Or thank you for supporting New Japan Pro Wrestling 17 years. Thank you very much. I laughed, got angry, cried. It was great. I look forward to playing the remaining three games as a free agent. He has he has three more dates for New Japan. Merchandise being removed from PWTs.com. Story is this is related to him leaving New Japan as opposed to potentially going to WWE. They did remove the Jay White merch when he left New Japan as well. So we will see if there is anything to read into that or not. Of course, if he's going to WWE, he will have no PWT's merchandise. Dave wrote in The Observer, the last word, and this, of course, was on Friday. He had not made up his mind. People here range from hopeful to I perceive as confident he will be coming. If he was to sign with AEW, likely arrival date would be around the Greensboro show. His final New Japan date, February 24th. WWE, they could uh, see him holding off until WrestleMania. Tony Khan has been especially enthusiastic about 2024 between new signings and returns over the next few months. MJF, Adam Cole, Kenny Omega, Bandito, Ray Fenix, Pac, and Britt Baker. I can tell you as of... uh, Moments ago, it does not appear there is anything new on Okada from people that know him. So he is still deciding what it is that he wants to do. And quite frankly, it may it may be that today would be the first day he could even talk to WWE about any of this. Because, you know, WWE is not talking to somebody who is under contract officially. And, of course, AEW... You know, they can talk to people under New Japan contract because they have. They've signed people who are under New Japan contract. So I would presume in the next couple of days he'll probably have some discussions. And then maybe we will know more about which way he is leaning. But as of right now, nothing new. That's the story on Okada. 36 years old. I would say make your money, but he's going to make his money either way. So <laughs> so's Barry Bloom. Man, what a year Barry Bloom has had. And he's doing the representation for Okada when it comes to these negotiations. And I'm sure WWE and Barry Bloom probably have a little bit of a feeling on what's going on right now when it comes to Okada. So I don't think they're going into that blind into into this time of the year, Okada negotiations. But where do you think he ends up? Because, man, again, there are, when you take your fandom out of it, as far as what place you would prefer him to go, I mean, there are so many advantages both ways for him. And, again, this is a big move coming over here to the States. Where do you think this ultimately ends up? I don't know. We're going to see who pays him what or who offers to pay him what. I don't know if that matters, though. Do you think that matters yes, at the end of does. the day? Yes, it does. It does. Yeah, well, wait, hold on now. And I'll tell you why. I'll well, tell you why. No, are you talking about top dollar? Obviously, money matters, that's for sure. But does the the top of the dollar scale, scale matter as much as maybe some of the, again, I would figure AEW could offer more things to him, you know, again, personally, than, than maybe could be offered through TKO, but go ahead. Well, he wants to work WrestleMania. I know he stated that. So that obviously would not happen if he went to AEW. No. AEW, he'd have probably a much easier schedule. I don't know what kind of schedule he wants. I don't know what either side is going to pay him. I don't know what he wants in terms of anything, really. I mean, he's going hes going because he can make significantly more money in America. That's the number one reason that he's doing this. He obviously made a lot per New Japan standards, but, you know, he learned what the top stars are making here in this country. And not just the top stars in AEW, but the top stars in WWE as well. And he's going to be making probably multiples of what he made in Japan. And I think that that's the main reason. And obviously, then he'll see what he wants. I mean, friends with Nakamura. He's been friends with Nakamura forever. He's been friends with the Elite forever. He's been friends with, with Kenny Omega and and Will Ospreay. And, I mean, we'll see. You acquire friends in the wrestling business. Yeah, he's got a lot of friends in both places. And he's also 36. And... I don't know, you know, 
obviously there was no AEW before Nakamura came to America, but you know Nakamura was pretty much thrashed, and he preferred to go to a place where he was not going to be required to have five star matches. He could just go in there and have good matches and surf and be happy. So he'd go to work. That's it. And he's close with Okada. I don't know what they've talked about. I don't know what Okada wants to do. So I don't. I do not know. I do not have a. I do not have a. Like a. No, there's no crystal ball. There's no magic eight ball where you can figure out what he's going to do. But if it comes down to who can give you the highest ceiling and who can give you WrestleMania, I mean, that's why a lot of wrestlers over the years, whether they they talk they're they're looked upon as Jim Crockett guys or Bill Watts guys or this person or that person, there are so many people that just always wanted to go to WWF, WWE because that's what they considered the pinnacle. And if uh, in Okada's mind, WWE is the pinnacle, then, you know, being on a WrestleMania and all that sort of stuff, you know, that's going to take precedence probably over anything else. But again, we'll see. We'll see what his motivations are and what he's thinking. Because again, you know, what's I, I hope, I do hope that there is some, I, I would love to hear an interview. I would love to hear something as far as his motivations for coming over and really, again, I, I again, I, very few guys write books, I, I, you know, and I, maybe a ton of guys in Japan do. I, I know Takata has, and, and some other people have. But I would love to to see this thing kind of play out in, in documentary form or in the written word, as far as this whole process for him at this point in his career, because it is a fascinating one, and it is one that. I mean, it's never happened before. We never have had somebody who's been the number one star in all of Japanese wrestling say, hey, I'm out, and I'm going over to the States, and I'm going to try to see what I can do there. So this whole thing is really fascinating on a lot of different levels to me. Rampage is tonight, and they are currently at 1,987 tickets. They sold about 189 since they announced John Moxley, Jeff Hardy. And they are doing $20 tickets. So uh, trying to get some people into that building. It's set up for 2098 according to WrestleTix, although the actual building sells significantly more than that. But it's a Dynamite Rampage taping tonight. And what we have got for the show thus far is Moxley and Jeff Hardy. We've got... Well, what a match, by the way. John Moxley and Jeff Hardy... Mm. You know, sometimes you go, close your eyes and imagine the match, and it's going to be exactly as you expect. I can't even close my eyes and imagine this match. A sloppy mess. Moxie just beats him up the entire time, and Jeff falls on him repeatedly, mm. and gets choked out. I think that's what's going to happen. <laughs> that's my guess. Swerve Strickland uh, versus whoever Hangman chooses. He teased the whole effing show, but they have not announced Rob Van Dam, but I presume that's who it's going to be. Hangman Page, Toa Leona, Dealer's Choice Match, Deanna Parazzo and Taya Valkyrie, and Chris Jericho versus Kyle Fletcher. So that is the lineup for tonight. Not a big marquee lineup, that's for sure, for tonight's Dynamite. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.